Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And one of those things is to actually buy an existing business. And a lot of people think, oh, my heavens, I don't want to own a McDonald's or, you know, that's going to cost a gazillion dollars. And so we're going to allay a lot of that, those fears today. We're going to be talking about a lot of great information on how and why you might want to consider purchasing an existing business. So please join me in welcoming Dominic Rinaldi to our program today. Welcome, Dominic. Hey, Deb, thank you so much for having me. Pleasure to be here. Great. Well, let me tell people just a little bit about you, and then we will dive into this. So as owner and managing partner of Sun Acquisitions, Dominic Rinaldi helps clients buy and sell businesses across across a variety of industries. Since 2005, he's been personally involved in over 300 transactions for businesses with an enterprise values of 2 million to 50 million. Recognizing many business owners didn't understand the full requirements of a successful exit, acquisition and scaling process, he founded K2 Advisor. Their mission is to educate business owners and buyers so they can maximize transaction benefits and minimize transaction risks. Dominic's an industry-recognized expert who frequently shares his hard-earned knowledge from the stage, if we ever get to go back to the stage again, right, in print and over the airwaves, including as the host of the popular M&A Unplugged podcast. So again, Dominic, welcome. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Great. Well, one of the things that I always like to start with is to find out how my guests got to where they are today. So, yeah, you know, what led you to determine that this is your passion in life? Yeah, so I think it really started Deb, at a very young age. Mm-hmm. I was always very entrepreneurial. Mm-hmm. Even as a young kid, I, I would work before and after school. I was always hustling and trying mm-hmm. to figure out, you know, things and that interest me. And mm-hmm. I was always tinkering and trying new things. So mm-hmm. I think it's always been in me to own my own business. Mm-hmm. But after school, I launched a corporate career and I spent uh, many years, you know, chasing uh, a corporate career mm-hmm. and then uh, actually went into the startup world. I, uh-huh. I, I worked for a couple of venture capital backed mm-hmm. companies. Mm-hmm. And, you know, after uh, 25 years or so on I, I, of experience, I had that itch and I probably mm-hmm. had the itch, you know, way before to, to really own my own business. Mm-hmm. And so I found myself uh, in transition in my early forties and, uh, and I, you know, sort of took stock and inventory of where I was at. And I thought this would be a good time for me to really start my own business. Mm-hmm. And, um, and rather than start something, I really got to uh, the conclusion pretty quickly that buying an existing business mm-hmm. was really the safer path for me. Mm-hmm. Because in my early 40s, I had a young family. I had college educations mm-hmm. ahead of me. I had a mortgage. Yeah, I, had a right, little, right. I had a lot of obligations. And starting from zero, eh. <laughs> it's hard. You know, look, mm-hmm. it, 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 it can be for some people, you know, if you're looking for a side gig mm-hmm. or you have a long runway and you don't have to generate mm-hmm. income immediately, starting is fine. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you're looking to, to generate some significant income, uh, move the needle, uh, I, uh, starting a business, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, buying a business is a much safer path. Mm-hmm. You know, you're walking into a business that's got existing revenues, mm-hmm. cash flows, all the attributes of an mm-hmm. ongoing business, if it's a good fit for you. And so mm-hmm. I went out into the marketplace looking to buy my own business. And mm-hmm. in the process, I uh, was very frustrated. Mm-hmm. I wasn't finding what I wanted. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing was really, you know, for my skills and my experiences, 
you know, hitting my buttons. And mm -hmm. um, I landed on this opportunity, this firm that was actually helping people buy and sell businesses ah. was for sale. <laughs> and I had been involved in a couple of transactions mm -hmm. throughout my career. And the more I did my research, the more I realized that I thought I could really take mm -hmm. my previous experiences and skill sets mm -hmm. and what I love to do and apply it to this business and take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. And and the short answer is, you know, 17 years later, that's exactly what I've done. I've, I've you know, taken the business to a whole nother level. It's been a tremendous ride. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you know, small business ownership is uh, is not for the faint of heart. So there's been lots of bumps along mm -hmm. the way. But uh, I, I set out to create financial and personal freedom through owning my own business. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I've been able to do. I love it. You know, and I, we probably should explain that M&A is mergers and acquisitions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's funny. We get to, to going in this the industry jargon and forget that not everybody knows what we're talking about. Right. Um, and I've been through both when I was in the corporate world. Those were always entertaining, mm -hmm. especially from the employee's perspective. Yes. Um, you know, and, and so those were always uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's it's as you said, it's in many ways when you're buying an existing business, it's, you know, it is much safer because there's a client base, a customer base. Um, you know, there's just all sorts of things that already exist. So you're not having to, to start from zero, but it's not that you pick up the newspaper and look in the want ads. I don't even know if those still exist. Or, you know, you go online to Craigslist. I think that still exists. Um, you know, or things. Now, I'm guessing that there are probably are businesses that are listed there. But that's not exactly the best way to be doing this. So, you know, and, and I'm also kind of guessing that because of the pandemic, there may be a lot of people who are thinking, hmm, I need to think about going forward a little bit differently whether they got furloughed, whether they thought they were going to get furloughed, whether their business completely shut down, whether it's changed so much they don't want to be there. I mean, just all of those uncertainties. So now really is probably a great time for people to be thinking about selling a business because there's lots of people out there um, or also buying. But, you know, how do you even start that process? You know, you, it's like, okay, Dominic, I think I want to do this. Mm -hmm. Now what? Yeah. And so, you know, if we're talking about on the buy side, um, mm -hmm. it starts with proper preparation. And I can't okay. stress that enough because mm -hmm. the reason we started this other business that you referenced in the mm -hmm. intro K2 advisor mm -hmm. uh, is because during the 20 years of this, that this practice has been around, mm -hmm. the number one pitfall that we see time and time again, whether you're looking to buy a business or mm -hmm. sell a business is people don't properly prepare. Right. And the risk in that is that you didn't maximize your returns, mm -hmm. but you also introduced all sorts of risk that didn't need to be there. Mm -hmm. And so the first step is to, is to really set out to build a plan. So mm -hmm. if we're on the buy side, it's important to take an inventory of yourself, mm -hmm. uh, what you're good at, uh, what you're not good at. Mm. Um, and even if you're good at things, you might not necessarily want to do those things, right? Mm -hmm. So there's uh, there's this concept right. that- You might've been a CPA for years, but you don't want to do that anymore. Exactly. <laughs> you know, there's, I'm part of this uh, uh, consulting, uh, this coaching program called Strategic Coach, mm -hmm. Dan Sullivan. And, and one of the things that uh, he coined is this thing called unique ability. Mm -hmm. So it's what you're good at, but mm -hmm. also what you love to do, right? Ah. Mm -hmm. might be good at something when you mm -hmm. might not love to do it. So you really need to understand mm -hmm. what it is that you love to do or where you can apply your talents, mm -hmm. and your experiences, and then start to build the plan from there. So mm -hmm. if what sorts of businesses would be a good fit? Mm -hmm. What's the geography mm -hmm. that you're willing to buy a business within? Mm -hmm. Do you want it to be very local? Are you mm -hmm. willing to relocate potentially? Mm -hmm. Um, are you uh, interested in a certain size? Mm -hmm. Does it have to have certain attributes? Like mm -hmm. you want to have a management team mm -hmm. because you don't want to be in the operations day in right. day out. Union, non-union, mm -hmm. real estate, no real estate. Mm -hmm. So, and the list goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. And we help people think through mm -hmm. all of these things. So at the end of the day, what they have is a plan. 
right. how to go forward into mm-hmm. the marketplace. And there's lots of ways to go forward. I mean, mm-hmm. you referenced a few, which is these internet sites where you can go and find businesses, mm-hmm. but there's lots of other ways to mm-hmm. go find businesses. But starting with, you've got a plan, you know what you're looking for, mm-hmm. And then you can move forward. Mm -hmm. Too often, Deb, I see that people launch a search because they need a certain cash flow number. Ah. They just narrow in on a certain type Mm -hmm. of business and they have that seems profitable, right? Exactly. And Mm -hmm. they or the prospects seem good for that. Mm -hmm. And they haven't really taken a step back and 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 looked at the bigger issues Mm -hmm. around how it fits for them Mm -hmm. long term. Because the hope is you're going to take that business to a whole nother level mm-hmm. over some period of time. And the business is going to be worth much more mm-hmm. than when you first purchased it. Right. Cause uh, then you can sell it. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Or pass it down, you know, mm-hmm. to the next generation or whatever it is, or to the employees, mm-hmm. whatever it is you decide to do, but uh, you have options if you mm-hmm. do it right. Right. You know, and I know a lot of people, you know, I joked about buying McDonald's. I mean, they do, the franchise obviously is an option. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can buy into, and there's, you know, anything and everything that are out there. And I'm guessing some of them are getting pretty inexpensive right now, especially if they've been in, say, the hospitality realm. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you buy a franchise, you're... It, it, but it, there's lots of other things that you have to consider, you know, and, and I think a lot of people don't understand that they think, you know, okay, well, I can advertise the way I want, or I can do this, or I can do that. And in a, in a lot of cases, no, that is just not the case. Yeah. You know, so we don't really do a lot of franchise. Uh, yeah, franchises are a different animal. They are a different animal and, and they are a good fit for certain mm-hmm. people. Right. Uh, it, I, I, I kind of consider, consider it the bridge between starting something and mm-hmm. buying a business that isn't part of a franchise. Right. You know, when you look at starting something, mm-hmm. uh, the, my knock against starting a business is the statistics are just not good. Right. When oh, yeah. 50 percent of mm-hmm. all startups fail inside mm-hmm. of three years. When you get out to five years, it's over 75 percent. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. The failure rate is so high. You could have mm-hmm. spent so much money mm-hmm. trying to get some success mm-hmm. and you wasted it all when you could have applied that towards buying an existing mm-hmm. business. I think franchises are certain, you know, in the middle, right? Mm-hmm. You're, you're buying into a model that's hopefully proven. Mm-hmm. You're walking in the systems and processes. And, you know, if you're a first time business owner, you don't have to guess at all of that. Right. Your so, marketing is done for you. Your hiring processes are done for you. All of those various things. Uh, you know, the marketing, I don't so much, it, maybe it depends, you know, McDonald's, yes, but right. you know, there are so many franchises that don't do marketing mm-hmm. for you. Yeah, a lot of people don't even realize some businesses are franchises. Exactly. And so the challenge I have with franchising is once you do learn the processes and the systems and you get conversant and all of that, you're typically giving away somewhere between seven to 15% of your top line revenues. Mm-hmm. Um, as your fees to right. the franchise system. Mm-hmm. You got a big silent partner. You have a very big <laughs> silent partner. And and when you think about that, seven to fifteen percent, with the average being somewhere around, you know, 10%, mm-hmm. that's a lot off the right, top right. line. Most businesses barely make 10% mm-hmm. in profit margins. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it, so you're giving a lot away off the top. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you buy an existing business that isn't part of a franchise, Mm -hmm. you're not giving up those percentages. Now Mm -hmm. you give something up, right? But you hope that the previous owner Mm -hmm. has built processes and systems and trained employees. So you're walking into something Mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, is, is somewhat turnkey. Right. So, you know, why wouldn't I just, you know, see a for sale sign uh, somewhere and go, Oh, I think I'm going to go buy that business. Why, why is it that I don't really want to be doing this by myself? Yeah. Well, first off, um, any business that puts a for sale sign out, <laughs> you have to be very worried. Right. <laughs> uh, and here's why. In the world of selling businesses, it's a very confidential process. Mm-hmm. Unlike real estate, you know, real estate, you put signs out, mm-hmm. you want it to be blasted everywhere. There's an MLS. In business sales, there's nothing like that. Right. And, and there's a reason for it is you don't want anybody to know the business is for sale. Mm-hmm. You don't want your employees to know. Right. You don't want your clients. You don't want your customers to know because they're going to go, hmm, maybe I should go somewhere else. Exactly right. Mm-hmm. 
And so there aren't for sale signs mm -hmm. out. And so you, you have to, you really have to uh, beat the bushes, you know, finding the right business. I, I tell people all the time is like trying to find a job mm -hmm. and it takes, it can take a long time. Right. It's not a two month process. Mm -hmm. It could be six months to several years mm -hmm. to find the right fit. And, um, and the way you go about it really depends on what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Uh, largely, and and you know, is, is it an industry sector that you look at, mm -hmm. geography, and then you can build your plan from there. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and of course, working with someone like your organization, you know the very specific details and things that that we would need to be looking for. Um, I've interviewed people from the other side, you know, and and I know that you also are uh, you 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 represent the seller, and of course, one of the the biggest things is that. The, the value of that business because the owner, the current owner almost always thinks it's worth a heck of a lot more than it really is, um, which is kind of tragic, you know, and, and, but a big part of that is they think, okay, well, you know, we, we spent $10,000 on that car. Therefore that car is worth $10,000. Well, probably not, um, you know, and, 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 you know, and, and they just don't realize how to value a business, um, especially if, you know, uh, you know, it, it, are there existing employees? I mean, you know, are they all of those various things? So again, that's where it's good to work with somebody who's been through this process and knows how to do it. Yeah. And, and you know, Deb, my, my uh, cautionary tale here is that you should know the value of your business at all times. Mm -hmm. It, it is so critical because to not know is just flying blind. Mm -hmm. And the cautionary tale here is that you may think you have 10 or 20 years of runway to, to run that business mm -hmm. to then maybe sell it or pass it down to the next generation. But I could give you any number of stories where people have life's thrown them a curveball mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they weren't prepared. Right. And selling the business becomes their only avenue to getting past the curveball. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they haven't done all the things they need to do to maximize mm -hmm. value. And they didn't even know what the value was. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, just a couple of months ago, I had two partners in my office. They've run the business for mm -hmm. 30 years. One partner is ready to retire. The other one is just not ready to go. Mm -hmm. And they asked us, to do a market opinion of value. So mm -hmm. if we had if we were taking the business to okay. market, mm -hmm. um, what would the business value be? Mm -hmm. And we did that exercise for mm -hmm. them and we delivered the results. Mm -hmm. And they and weren't happy. A partner that <laughs> wanted out of the business uh -huh. was so displeased, right? right. I mean, he, he had a number that was three times the number mm -hmm. we delivered to him. Mm -hmm. Now the partner that was staying. He's like, was, bonus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is a great deal. Mm -hmm. But the reality was that because the number wasn't sufficient for the partner who wanted to retire mm -hmm. to leave, he's now stuck in the business. Right, right. And they either have to grow that business or that partner that wants to retire just has to live with the lower number. Mm -hmm. And if they had learned this, mm -hmm. even just 10 years ago, they would have had time to do something right. to either build up the value mm -hmm. or recalibrate their expectations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you get hit with that reality, when you're so close to the moment that you want to leave, it, it's just too mm -hmm. late. There's, there's not a right. lot you can do to move the needle at that mm -hmm. point in time. So that, again, is why we started K2 Advisor. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get ahead of the curveball help educate people very early on mm -hmm. in their business ownership cycle to understand the value and then get it updated every mm -hmm. couple of years. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we also give people the things that they can do to move the needle on value. Mm -hmm. Here are the seven things that you can improve. And if you move the needle in these, in these seven areas, mm -hmm. without growing the top line revenue at all, you're going to improve the value mm -hmm. of your business. Right. That sort of stuff is invaluable for mm -hmm. people to understand. Mm -hmm. Well, and of course, understanding that is just beneficial to the business in general, you know, whether they want to sell it or not. So, you know, maybe part of the, you know, it, it could be that it's something like, you know, you need to invest in real estate. 
Um, you know, and, and so, okay, you do well, now you're able to expand what you offer. And so that's going to increase the, the, you know, your profit margin, all those various things. So yeah, it's not just that you're thinking, well, I have to do this so that I can sell it. It's, this is just good business practice. Yeah. And I, I'd like to give you a, gr- a good example. Mm-hmm. We just sold a business at the end of last year. We first met that owner six years ago. Ah. And six years ago, we did this exercise mm-hmm. for him and he's like, oh my goodness, this is not enough. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I can't, I can't sell the business now. Mm-hmm. We're okay, great. Here's the roadmap. Here mm-hmm. are the things you need to do. And over the course of the next six years, we did an annual update mm-hmm. and we checked in, <laughs> gave them the roadmap on things mm-hmm. to do. And it wasn't just around the finances. Right. It was operational stuff mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Like there were legal things that he could do that uh-huh. would make the business mm-hmm. easier to transfer mm-hmm. to a new owner. Mm-hmm. So we went through all those things and every year he moved the needle in some way. Mm-hmm. Fast forward, you know, six years later, he had gotten the business to the number that was good Mm -hmm. for, we took it out to market Mm -hmm. and we got six offers on that business. Wow. And he sold that business in, in record time. Mm -hmm. And he walked away with a really Mm -hmm. nice, with a really nice deal. But there's a great example of, he did the work early, Mm -hmm. put in the time to move the Mm -hmm. needle, did it. And then he walked away at at the number Mm -hmm. that he wanted and needed. Right. Right. You know, and, and again, it's just good business strategic planning, you know, because you're planning for growth, which is what you should be doing all along. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and, and we hear the sad stories about, you know, somebody passes away yes. and the widow, the widower, the children, whoever, you know, they think, okay, this is a million dollar business mm-hmm. and they get a hundred grand yep. or, you know, all of those various things. And, and, you know, and, and of course the hard part for the, you know, whether it's a tragedy or not, you know, the, the, the business owner, I mean, they put so much blood, sweat and tears into the business yep. that, you know, they want it to be worth that million, that 2 million, that, you know, that whatever, and when it's not, it's very disheartening to them. Exactly. And, you know, your, your comment about, uh, you know, someone dies and, and leaves the business to the family. I have a situation a couple of years ago, a gentleman was diagnosed with brain cancer. Mm. He had five years to prepare the business. Mm-hmm. He couldn't do it. Oh. He, he just couldn't do it. And I actually mm-hmm. invited a psychologist to come on our podcast mm-hmm to talk a bit, a mm-hmm. bit about that. Like mm-hmm. what, where's the mental block in people knowing that there's right. a date on the calendar mm-hmm. and they still didn't prepare. Mm-hmm. He, he didn't want to admit there was a date on the calendar. That's, and that's yeah. really it is people mm-hmm. don't, you know, it's a mortality thing mm-hmm. and, and there's a lot to that. The sad part of that is uh, the business wound up in the hands of his two daughters mm-hmm. uh, who really couldn't run the business. Mm-hmm. Uh, they brought it to us to sell Inside of six months, the business had lost 70% of its value. Ooh. And along the way, one of the mm-hmm. one of the daughters got sick from the stress mm-hmm. of having to deal with this. Mm-hmm. And what's really interesting is they had begged their father to do some things during mm-hmm. that period of time to prepare the business mm-hmm. for succession, and he just wouldn't mm-hmm. do it. Mm-hmm. And so there's a live example of they lost mm-hmm. so much value. Mm-hmm. So not only did they have to mourn the loss of their dad, but then they had to deal with the right. turmoil mm-hmm. of having to settle the business mm-hmm. and uh, very uncomfortable and mm-hmm. there, and it could have been avoided. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and uh, even if he had just said, I'm not going to do it, you know, so we're just going to get out. Yeah. That right. might've actually been easier, yeah. um, you know, and, and, you know, or, you know, I mean, there's, there's so many things, especially if you have, you know, employees, family, all of those, I mean, you know, y- you might have employees that good golly, they want to buy it. Um, you know, and, and that's where it comes back to the whole confidentiality thing. You know, are you letting your employees know, you know, all of those things. And sometimes those things work out. Sometimes they don't, mm-hmm. um, you know, if, if you've got an employee that says, Whoa, you're selling the business. I want out. They were probably looking for an easy way out anyway, um, you know, and, and, but yeah, it's, it's so interesting, you know, to, to go through all of these things, but it's, you know, again, it's, it's all about planning and, and just making sure that you have thought through the process. So what are some other things that you want to be thinking about if you're going to buy? I mean, you know, is there a, a wrong type of business to buy? You know, so um, there, there are, yes. It, and, and it all comes down to you personally, right? Mm-hmm. Like the, uh, I see people sometimes chase 
a business hmm. because of uh, the industry that it's in mm -hmm. or the uh, cash flow that it's mm -hmm. generating, but it's not a good fit for them. Hmm. And, um, you know, and so, you know, an easy example is somebody who has spent their career uh, in distribution, mm -hmm. all of a sudden wants to buy a manufacturing business. Mm -hmm. Well, where's your skill set? Right. How do you, what do you, mm -hmm. what's going to happen when there's a problem mm -hmm. on the production mm -hmm. line, you lose a key employee, you know, if you don't know anything about mm -hmm. that, you've put your entire investment mm -hmm. at risk. Right. And so I, 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 th I like to think of this from a risk perspective. Mm -hmm. You're putting X amount of dollars into this. You're taking a loan out for X. Mm -hmm. Is that investment in the best hands possible? Mm -hmm. Your hand. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if you almost remove yourself from being the buyer of that and say, I'm going to be an investor. Right. And I'm going to invest in myself for this. Would you invest mm -hmm. in yourself for that business? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, then you shouldn't do it. Right. 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 You know, and, and obviously, especially now, there's a lot of businesses that are hurting, um, you know, and, and I mean, that's, that's clearly very tragic, um, you know, and, and they're hurting for a variety of reasons. I mean, nobody could foresee a pandemic. I mean, you know, you might think, well, you know, we might have a bad storm, we might have somebody get sick, you know, all these, very, but, you know, you don't see that. It, you know, you're, you're going to shut things down for a year at least, yeah. um, you know, and, and so for many, for many businesses, holy schmoly, they took off, you know, that's, that's been interesting to, to see those that pivoted yeah. <laughs> the, the key word of 2020 yeah. and, and really embraced all of this. But, you know, there, there, are, unfortunately were a lot of businesses that struggled. And so is it a good idea to buy a struggling business? Yeah. So it's a great question. And, you know, you very much nail, uh, hit the nail on the head. I mean, this is almost a tale of haves and have nots. Some businesses have benefited incredibly from the pandemic mm -hmm. and others are really struggling. Mm -hmm. And so the question of, you know, should you consider a distressed business mm -hmm. uh, comes down to, you know, a lot of factors. Uh, again, I can't stress the importance of what's your skill set in mm -hmm. that industry. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's going to take all of your knowledge and all your skills and all your experience to turn around a distressed mm -hmm. business. And so can you apply your talents to that business? Mm -hmm. The first question to be asking is, is this downturn uh, a material downturn? Mm -hmm. And is it likely to be a sustained downturn? Mm -hmm. Or can you see the light at the end of the tunnel? Right. So you can, you can look at some businesses mm -hmm. and say, okay, right. This, this business was clear, clearly hit because of COVID mm -hmm. and it's going to come back. The right. market's there. The mm -hmm. industry is good. The clients are still there. The margins are mm -hmm. healthy. Um, you know, all of those attributes are in place mm -hmm. and you can see a path to this business recovering. Or is this business in a cyclical downturn uh, or systemic downturn mm -hmm. that's likely to go beyond, way mm -hmm. beyond COVID? Right. You know, the Was easy, it blockbuster video? Exactly. <laughs> and the, easiest, the industry to pick on right mm -hmm. now is retail. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, retail is getting hit very hard. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with the Amazons of the world, let alone COVID, right? Right. Uh -huh. And so you might be in a long during long term mm -hmm. down downturn here mm -hmm. for retail, mm -hmm. and it might not be the best place to be putting mm -hmm. your dollars. But I'd like, you know, there are distressed deals that make a lot of mm -hmm. sense. If you do your homework, it's going to require mm -hmm. a lot of diligence. Mm -hmm. uh, it, don't shortcut the diligence. Mm -hmm. Don't make assumptions that you, you know, you shouldn't be making. Right. Oh, it's just Follow COVID. The, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Follow the trail. Mm -hmm. Hire experts mm -hmm. who can help you do models and figure it out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, make sure that you know exactly mm -hmm. what you have and you have a path mm -hmm. to getting healthy. And the last thing I'll mention is never underestimate how much working capital you're going to need. Because mm -hmm. when you look at one of the top three reasons businesses fail, mm -hmm. they don't have enough working capital. Right. right. So make sure you're going to have enough working capital mm -hmm. to, to withstand whatever that downturn mm -hmm. is and maybe even another downturn. Mm -hmm. Right. What well, one of the things you mentioned was do your homework. How much do they have to disclose, you know, as, as the seller, you know, it, 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 you know, like when you buy a house, 
they have to disclose that, you know, the dishwasher doesn't work or, you know, they've got termites or, or whatever. When they're selling a business, you know, do they have to disclose all of that? Yeah. So there's something in the final agreements that the buyer and the seller sign, there's something called reps and warranties mm. and indemnifications. Mm -hmm. These reps and warranties are basically uh, what the owner is rep representing and warranting in the business to mm -hmm. be true and accurate. Like, for example, I own 100% of the company. Mm -hmm. That's a rep, you know, right. that's a rep, yeah. right? Um, uh, you know, there are, there have not been any lawsuits and there are no threatened lawsuits. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to, you know, the lawyers are going to work on all of those mm -hmm. reps and warranties. And um, fraud is something that uh, survives any period of time. It has mm -hmm. no time limit. Mm -hmm. So if an owner committed fraud by not disclosing material, mm -hmm. and that's the key word here, material mm -hmm. issues, they could be on the hook. Mm. Um, for the entire purchase mm -hmm. price, for legal fees, mm -hmm. for damages, all sorts of stuff, right? And so uh, my word of caution to owners is if there's something material in the business, mm -hmm. disclose it right. and disclose it early in the process mm -hmm. because it will only cost you money if the buyer goes down the path mm -hmm. really far because you're going to be spending money on attorneys and accountants mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Dis Close anything that is material to the business very early on, mm -hmm. let the buyer digest it and figure out if they think they can mm -hmm. withstand whatever that material issue is. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there is liability for an owner not disclosing material mm -hmm. issues. That said, due diligence is the realm and the responsibility of the buyer. Mm. So the buyer needs to ask for all the proper things mm -hmm. need to get all the, you know, information uh, that to help them make the mm -hmm. right decisions. And this is where surrounding yourself <laughs> with good mergers and acquisitions uh, advisors mm -hmm. really helps a good right. accountant, a good attorney, mm -hmm. M&A advisors like ourselves mm -hmm. who do hundreds of deals mm -hmm. and know all the places that mm -hmm. you should be looking. Right. And by the there's a whole new level to all of this diligence with COVID mm -hmm. and which has made diligence mm -hmm. even more important and a longer process. Right. Right. You know, and yeah, it is, as you were saying, you know, we, the common person, we have no idea where to, to look. I mean, you know, are there liens against the business? Have they taken out loans on say equipment? Um, you know, all of these various things, uh, trademarks. I mean, you know, that's, that's one of the, the big things. And, and, Absolutely. you know, does the trademark transfer and how do you, you know, all of those, those various things, you know, you can't just Google it. I mean, this is no. not something you're watching a YouTube video about folks. <laughs> no. No. It's exactly right. You know, and, all right, and, and I'll add one thing to that, Deb. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are checklists, due diligence checklists mm -hmm. that we see come in from buyers mm. that have over 400 items on them. Whoa. Now think about that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there is so much. Now, mm -hmm. in most cases, half of them won't apply to that particular business right. because it's a grab mm -hmm. bag of mm -hmm. everything that you could possibly mm -hmm. imagine under the sun that the buyer wants to know about. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it just may not apply to mm -hmm. a specific business. So an owner would look at that list and, and just write not applicable to mm -hmm. maybe half of that. Right. But if that gives you any indication mm -hmm. of how detailed diligence can get, mm -hmm. uh, we see lists that are that large. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and just like buying a house, people are looking at, at you know, things that you're like, what the heck? Um, I remember we, when we sold our, our house in Colorado, <clears throat> one of the things that they came back with was, you know, the fuse box mm -hmm. had two different types of fuses. Mm -hmm. They were the exact same fuse, but they were made by two different companies. They didn't like that. They wanted mm -hmm. one replaced so that it was all, and we were like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was an expensive prospect, um, you know, and, but because there was no reason for it, it wasn't that, you know, company A's circuits were much better than company B, we were able to decline that and say, no, uh-uh. You know, it was just one of those things that, yeah, they opened up the fuse box and they went, well, these are different. We want them all the same. Um, you know, and, and but I'm, I'm sure you have that with businesses too, where they're thinking, okay, you know, and, and, the, and, then, and the opposite too, where you're like, you know, okay, this is something really important. And the buyer's like, eh, whatever. <laughs> you know? Right, right. 
Yeah, because most people don't do this very mm -hmm. often in their right. lifetimes. Mm -hmm. You know, once or twice maybe mm -hmm. in their lifetime. And so the the caution here is surround yourself with people who do this for a living mm -hmm. day in and day out. They will protect you and mm -hmm. you know help you you know from going down a path or falling into the common mm -hmm. pitfalls that can be avoided, which you know could really destroy your returns mm -hmm. and create all sorts of risk. Right. Now, I'm sure one of the biggest questions that people always have is, how much is it going to cost? Mm -hmm. um, you know, do they have to have a million dollars that they can invest? Or is this, you know, the hundred dollar, you know, discount thing? It, clearly, it costs money. <laughs> but are there different ways to structure the, the financing? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, and whether you're an individual buyer, an individual investor, or a company that's looking to grow through acquisition, mm -hmm. um, there are lots of ways to uh, skin the financing mm -hmm. cat, right? Everything from uh, you're going to go to the bank and get a loan to using a line of credit mm -hmm. uh, to getting seller financing to using earnouts. Mm -hmm. Earnouts are future payments based on uh, performance mm -hmm. of a company. Mm -hmm. So deal structures come in all shapes mm -hmm. and sizes. I will, uh, I will say for individual investors right now that are looking to acquire businesses that are less than $5 million in value, mm -hmm. the Small Business Administration uh, through the CARES Act II has uh, offered up some incentives ah. that are incredible. Mm -hmm. um, I've, never seen, I've never seen these sorts of incentives, uh, such as uh, they'll waive Mm -hmm. All of the SBA fees, the loan fees, wow, uh, which could be very substantial mm -hmm. on a three million dollar transaction. Mm -hmm. You could be talking about a hundred thousand dollars of fees. Mm -hmm. All of that's waived. Mm -hmm. The SBA will also pay the first six months of principal and interest. Wow, on your loan, and it's not added to the back end. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is paid for you mm -hmm. with no tax liability. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're going to get taxed on right. those. It is paid for you mm -hmm. up to $9,000 a month. Wow. And the other thing that they did as part of CARES Act II is they increased the amount of working capital that a buyer can get in an acquisition. Mm -hmm. It used to be capped at $350,000. Mm -hmm. They've now moved it up to a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And it's an unmonitored line of credit. And what mm -hmm. I mean by that is most lines of credit require that you need to produce quarterly, even monthly right. statements to show the health mm -hmm. of the business. Mm -hmm. This is completely unmonitored. Mm -hmm. You get the line of credit, you can draw it down if you need it, and mm -hmm. there's no reporting requirements. Mm -hmm. So some really amazing incentives right mm -hmm. now for people who are considering buying a business. And the last thing I'll mention is you can also do it for as little as 10% down. Mm -hmm. So if you're buying a $3 million business, you only need three hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and you've bought yourself a, a three million dollar business. Right, uh, and and you know the hope is that a three million dollar business is a good ongoing entity. You know that that you know it's it, it's it's making money, and so you can can do you know you can it, it's it's functioning well already. A three million dollar business should be generating a fair amount of income, mm -hmm. uh, even after you pay the monthly debt service, the mm -hmm. principal and interest. Of that loan, you should be generating mm -hmm. a fair amount of uh, of income mm -hmm. after that. Right. Now, are there businesses that people just buy as an investment, and then and 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 basically they're self managing, you know, and or is this something where you know you you have to get in and and you know you're there behind a desk whether it's you know your home office or you know your your wherever you know or is there kind of a combination. Yeah, it is. And, and uh, here's the thing that I would say, small business is hard, mm -hmm. lots of moving parts. Unless you're buying a business with a really talented and experienced management team mm -hmm. that uh, has demonstrated in the past under the previous ownership that they can run the business independently, mm -hmm. uh, I would be very careful about just making an investment. Mm -hmm. um, if you do have that situation, great. You make the investment, you monitor it, you make sure that things are going well. Mm -hmm. I would probably still advise that you get in there and understand the business right. in case you need to replace any mm -hmm. of the management or something happens. 
Uh, but by and large, when you're talking about a you know business is under ten million dollars a purchase price, typically we see that the investors are going to get in there and roll up their sleeves mm-hmm. and and have some part of that business. Right. So it comes back to that was a passion for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, a passion or something that they knew they were going to be mm-hmm. really good at. Right. Uh, and, and would enjoy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's funny. I was talking to a guest one time and, and, you know, we've all heard the saying, you know, if, if, if you're doing what you love, it's not really work. And he hated that saying he just absolutely hated it. He said, I do what I do because I love what I do outside of here. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and, and I thought, you know, he's got a point, yeah. you know, we might, we might do what we do yeah. so that we can do what we love. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and that really was it for him. You know, I, I don't remember what his business was, but he loved to travel. He loved to, you know, spend time with his family, all of those various things. And his business allowed him to do that. I totally agree with that statement, by the way. Um, I, I, the passion debate comes up a lot mm-hmm. and, um, I don't think you could just follow your passion when you're buying a business. Mm-hmm. Uh, I bring it back to what are you good at? Mm-hmm. What are you experienced at? And where can you move the needle? Mm-hmm. Right. And it may not be completely what you're passionate about. And that's OK, mm-hmm. uh, because I think I, I totally agree with that. Whoever that person was, there's lots of passions outside of mm-hmm. the business that you should be following. Your your, your business sh- should be working for you, mm-hmm. not the other way around. Right. Right. And unfortunately, that's the way it is many times with a, a small business, whether you buy one or start one yourself is it grinds us down. I mean, that's why businesses fail. You know, we we just run out of steam. We run out of time, energy, money, you know, all those various things. And it's like, I'm just going to go flip hamburgers at McDonald's. I, you know, I just want somebody to tell me what to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say, I think the number, not maybe it's not number one, but it's top three uh, value creators for a business Mm -hmm. owner is get yourself out of the business, out of the Mm day-to-day operations of the business. Right. If you can create a self-managing business, Mm -hmm. you've increased the value of your Mm -hmm. business without increasing $1 in revenue, you've Mm -hmm. increased the value of your business. And I promise you, Mm -hmm. you're going to be a much happier, Mm -hmm. you know, human being. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, there, there are obviously people who love going into the office, working on that, that business every single day, you know, all those various things, but, don't you want a vacation? You know, I, I mean, all these various things. And if you're on vacation and you're worried, the, yeah. <coughs> excuse me, the whole time about what's going on, then you got it. You've got lots of different problems there. Totally. Absolutely. So, you know, we're, we've been thinking about this. We think we might have the capital. Yeah. How do we decide that it really is time to pull the trigger on this? Yeah, that is such a personal question, right? <laughs> um I have, a, I have a saying that um, you, you've got to have some cowboy or cowgirl in you mm-hmm. to be a business owner um, is really not for the faint of heart. And you have to be okay with risk. So, mm-hmm. you know, sitting down and having an honest conversation with yourself, mm-hmm. uh, with your family, mm-hmm. right? If you have a family mm-hmm. or a significant other or a spouse, whoever it is, mm-hmm to make sure that you've got the support of your network and Mm -hmm. it's really in your heart uh, because it is not easy. Uh, I mean, look, anybody who bought a business in 2019, look what they were faced with. Oh yeah. I mean, good or bad, good or bad. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Because you might have all these opportunities and Mm -hmm. not have the money to, to maybe you were say zoom. (laughs) Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, Um, you never know what's around the corner. So you have to really understand and be comfortable with the fact Mm -hmm. that, you know, the buck stops with you. Mm -hmm. Uh, And if you're okay with that, uh, then it's just a matter of Mm -hmm. finding the right situation uh, at the right economics Mm -hmm. uh, that you think you can take to the next level. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and, and it, it, you know, we've been saying it over and over again, it is about planning, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and how you're going to be doing things and how you do things once you've made that, that purchase too, you know, and, and I keep thinking about, you know, when, when I worked for, uh, you know, in, in corporate America and we went through a bunch of mergers Mm -hmm. oh, 
those were actually worse than acquisition. And we had one really funny acquisition. I mean, it was, it was one of those things where, so giant, giant, giant insurance company. Uh-huh. And we were, this was about the point in time where, where websites were really taking off. Okay. So I'm dating myself here. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but so we had hired a firm and, you know, here, design these websites. They didn't work fast enough. So we bought them. <laughs> you know, we, they, we, all of a sudden we were their only client, um, mm-hmm. you know, and, and so that's kind of, you know, but I mean, clearly that's, that's a cash thing, but, yep. but then we went through some mergers where, you know, some similar insurance companies merged with others. Yes. And we did the horrible, awful thing for six months to a year of co CEO. Oh yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Did no. not work. I mean, you know, it was just like your, your home mom tells, you no, so you go to dad, yep. you know, and, 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 you know, or even worse, you call grandma, grandma. <laughs> you know? And so you, but, and you know, we, we laugh about that, but those are just things you need to think through. And, and I know the whole co CEO thing was they wanted to see who was going to come out on top. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and that really was what happened. I mean, you know, the, the one finally said, nah, I'm not doing this anymore. Right. Um, right. But, you know, think of, of all of those. And, and you know, even to the, the point of, are you going to keep those employees that are there? Um, whether it's, you know, the mailroom employee all the way up to, you know, C-level staff and, and managers. I mean, that, but that is part of that whole homework thing, um, you know, of, of figuring out what's going to happen with these folks. Yeah, so we spent a lot of time talking about, you know, looking for a deal and and diligence. Mm -hmm. One of the things uh, that people really fail to do is build what we call the integration plan. Mm -hmm. And so whether you're an individual investor again, or you're, Mm -hmm. you know, owner of a business and you're growing through acquisition, the time to be building an integration plan is when you're in diligence. Mm -hmm. And an integration plan is comprehensive. Mm-hmm. It looks at every function in the company, mm-hmm. HR, sales, marketing, mm-hmm. production, whatever it is, and you decide what's going to happen with that function. Mm-hmm. Uh, how is it going to get integrated in? What's the impact to clients? Mm-hmm. What happens with employees? How are employees being mm-hmm. integrated in? Payroll systems, mm-hmm. you know, pay, all that sort of stuff all needs to be thought out and mm-hmm. planned for. And then my other piece of advice here is someone, one person needs to be in charge of that process. Mm -hmm. Whether it's you as the acquirer, uh, the individual investor, you're going to own integration Mm -hmm. or you're going to hire somebody or pull somebody from Mm -hmm. the staff to own it. It's so important because getting the people and the systems and the functions right is critical Mm -hmm making sure that you get the return that you had hoped for mm-hmm. uh, and having a communication plan that underlines all of that, underlies mm-hmm. all of that is important. Mm-hmm. And you need to know how you're going to communicate to people, uh, not only what you're going to say, but how, what the frequency is, mm-hmm. what, what the mediums are. Mm-hmm. Is it going to be in person? Are you going to do emails? You're going to do combination. What are you going to do? have that all laid out mm-hmm. um, so that you have the, you know, you've increased your odds of success. Right. But, you know, when you do consummate mm-hmm. the transaction, mm-hmm. most people buy the business and then they, they're, they're at the closing table and they're like, okay, now what do we do? Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. You lost. Mm-hmm. Let's have a pizza party and let's pull everybody together. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. You need to be thinking that, you know, months in advance mm-hmm. so that you have this plan. How soon, you know, I mean, we were talking about the fact that, you know, much of this has to be confidential for a variety of reasons, but is there a point where you can meet with the senior team, Mm -hmm. the, the top clients? I mean, all those various things. Yeah. So uh, my advice is you never want to meet with the clients. That's, Mm -hmm. that's just, uh, that's a third rail as far as transactions go, unless, Mm -hmm there is some sort of consent that is needed from a client. Ah. Um, so there's a contract mm-hmm. and it's not assignable mm-hmm. under a change of control mm-hmm. and you have to get consent. Mm-hmm. Um, outside of that, you just, you never want to go down that path mm-hmm. with clients. Right, so Cause you just gave them a big negotiating. 
Oh my God, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You get you gave them runway. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh, oh, by the way, you know, we might think that the deal is going to close in two weeks or mm-hmm. a month. Can't tell you how often we've seen a deal that was planned to close next week. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden the lawyers found an issue or an issue popped mm-hmm. up and the closing gets delayed by right. a month, two, three mm-hmm. months. You've now given these clients, mm-hmm. you know, this opportunity mm-hmm. to think about, well, is this the right thing for mm-hmm. us? Should we be looking for another vendor? Yep. What kind and, of uh, deal are you going to cut me? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so you now let's talk about employees. This is a sensitive issue. And, you know, I, I have a lot of people who, who challenge us on this because they think, I've known these employees forever. Mm-hmm. They're friends of mine, potentially. Mm-hmm. Like, they've been to- It might be family. <laughs> right, might be family gatherings. Mm-hmm. They've been to barbecues, mm-hmm. maybe even your kid's wedding, whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. And I get that. Mm-hmm. But here's the flip side of all of that. If you tell employees that the business is for sale or in mm-hmm. the process of being sold, naturally, people are going to have lots of questions. Right, and they're going to update their resume. Well, and, 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 you know, let, let's start with the questions. None of the questions you can really answer for them. Right. Like, who's the buyer? Mm-hmm. Is my pay stay the same? Is my mm-hmm. job description going to change? Are they, like, mm-hmm. well, they're going to think of a million questions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you really have no idea because right. you, you're, you're not going to be involved. What, you're, you're not. And you mm-hmm. don't know what the buyer is going to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. So as humans, when we can't get questions answered, Mm -hmm. fear and doubt enters into the equation. Mm -hmm. The last thing you want is your workforce having fear and doubt. Because when there's fear and doubt and they're thinking, oh my God, I have college Mm -hmm. educations to Mm -hmm. worry about. I have a mortgage, Mm -hmm. whatever it is, then they're going to get to your point, which is they're going to now start updating their resume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they fill in those blanks. If they can't tell me, well, I'm going to figure it out on my own. Exactly right. And it's always the good people who can find the jobs, Right now you're at risk of losing your very best people mm-hmm. in the midst of selling your business. And I say this time and time again to owners, I don't care you know, how much your clients generate in revenue mm-hmm. or the margins, your people are your number one asset. Mm-hmm. They oh, need yes. the engine run. Mm-hmm. Without the people, you don't have a business. Mm-hmm. And so they have all the knowledge and everything. You need to take care of your business. Mm-hmm. You need to take care of your people. You need to protect them. And actually by not telling them, you're actually protecting mm-hmm. them. And so the day to tell them is the day that you actually sold the business and the money was wired mm-hmm. into your account. Now that aside, there might be situations where you have key employees, a key management team, mm-hmm. and depending on the size of the transaction mm-hmm. and the complexity of the transaction, you may need to allow the buyers to speak to one or two mm-hmm. of the key employees. There might be no way around mm-hmm. that. But even when that's the case, you need to do that very carefully. You need to plan it out. It needs to come very late in the process. Mm-hmm. There need to be guardrails around mm-hmm. what's going to be discussed. Um, because the last thing you want to do mm-hmm. is have these key employees have fear and doubt or put the deal in, in hostage mm-hmm. mode. Mm-hmm. And what do I mean by that? All of a sudden they realize, oh my goodness, they really need me. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm I'm your best salesperson. I've worked for this, I've worked for this owner for 20 years. I've mm-hmm. made him a lot of money mm-hmm. or her a lot of money. You know, maybe I deserve, you know, something out of mm-hmm. this. And they decide to start negotiating mm-hmm. something in the middle of mm-hmm. a sale process. Mm-hmm. That throws the whole deal into a tailspin. So, you know, and I have many other points that I can make around mm-hmm. this. But to wrap it up, I'd say you just nothing good comes from telling clients mm-hmm. or employees. Right. You know, and it's tricky because obviously, depending on what your business is, you might have people who are coming in and doing inspections. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe they're valuing the equipment, you know, all mm-hmm. of these various things. And so you have to know what you're going to reply to them, you yep. know, because again, they're going to make it up, um, yep. you know, and, and so now I, I'm also, I'm, I'm not saying lie to them. Yeah. So that's the other hard part is, you know, you can't say, oh, well, we're just getting a new bank loan. Uh, You know, and and somebody finds out you can, uh, you never lie to Mm -hmm. an employee. If somebody finds out you need to do damage control. Right. You just, uh, and lying to people is not the answer. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but, you know, you, you bring up a good point around it with somebody, you know, pe pe diligence, people need to come in and do inspect. Mm -hmm. There's ways to do that. So the workforce, unless mm -hmm. you're running three shifts. Right. Oh, yeah. You can you can have people in when you're closed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of what and nowadays diligence, much of the diligence can mm -hmm. be done online mm -hmm. in right. data rooms and via mm -hmm. Zoom. And, you know, we even see something where drones are being used mm -hmm. to do uh, inspections. Mm -hmm. So lots of ways around letting mm -hmm you know, anybody know or, or give them mm -hmm. even a hint that the business is for sale. Right, right. Well, oh my gosh, Dominic. See, I this is this is why I set a timer because <laughs> we could just continue on this because I still have all these questions, right. um, which that just means we need to, to chat again. But, you know, the thing that strikes me the most is, you know, people are thinking, okay, this is what I want to do. I mm -hmm. want to do this. Now what? So yeah. tell us about what it's like to work with your company and, and the services that you provide. Yeah. So on Sun Acquisitions, if you've done a lot of the prep work and you've decided now is the time to sell or to buy, mm -hmm. you can contest, contact us at Sun Acquisitions and we would help you do the transaction. Mm -hmm. If you're in the early stages and you haven't done the preparation, that's where K2 Advisor can okay. really help you, you know, put your plan in mm -hmm. place and decide what the proper next steps are. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I would highly rec recommend on our K2 Advisor website, mm -hmm. we have a bunch of free uh, resources. Ah. Um, there are uh, eBooks, uh, lots of things that you can download, a diligence mm -hmm. um, framework. Mm -hmm. But the two things that I would reference are one for owners of businesses and one for buyers of businesses, mm -hmm. their assessments, their free assessments. Mm -hmm. They take less than 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. you, you can take this assessment. We will email you all the questions and all the answers ah. and you're going to get a score mm -hmm. between zero and a hundred. Mm -hmm. You're going to know how prepared you are mm -hmm. uh, to buy a business. And for owners, you're going to know how valuable your business is. Mm. Uh, and if there are gaps, mm -hmm. now it's not going to be a number, but we're going to identify gaps mm -hmm. that you could address to improve your business. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Well, and you know, I was mousing about here on your website and, and I went to, to the listings section, mm -hmm. just out mm -hmm. of curiosity. And you've got around 10 or so, you know, I, I didn't count them right now, but I mean, these are very interesting businesses and you know, it's, it, it's, Things, I mean, like it, things, things that a lot of times people wouldn't even think yeah. about buying, but you know, like one, here's one full service water and fire damage restoration company. That sounds pretty technical. Yeah. That's what a friend of mine does. That might be something that he'd be very interested in. So, uh -huh. you know, you, you never know. And, and plus, you know, it's like we were saying, there's all these franchises out there. People don't stop to think, okay, what other businesses are available? So maybe that's one of the first things to, to be thinking about is, okay, <laughs> if I could do anything, what would I do mm -hmm. or what is available? Um, you know, and so looking at, at, you know, places like, like the listing section on your website gives you a good idea of, Hey, these, these are businesses that I could consider. Absolutely. The more research you do going out and seeing what businesses are for, mm -hmm. for sale can give you ideas, mm -hmm. things you'd never, like you said, things you'd never thought mm -hmm. of. So you start by casting a wide net and then you narrow it down Mm -hmm. to the things that really are a good fit for you. Right. Right. You know, and, and again, COVID is going to affect some of these things. I mean, like here, here's one that says window treatments, sales and installation. Okay. COVID's going to affect that. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to go into people's homes, you know, or businesses or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that is right now and probably for a year, that's going to be part of the due diligence, but that's also, you know, if you're, if you're safe with that, then you're just providing a level of safety yeah. that people are going to like. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's not a bad thing. Yep. Yep. And interestingly enough, that business took a hit because mm -hmm. of COVID, mm -hmm. but it's come roaring back. Right. Yeah. Because all these people are looking around going, Oh God, this is horrible. <laughs> exactly, right. That's exactly right. We are spending more money now. My, all of my clients mm -hmm. that are in the home improvement business, oh, yeah. businesses, they mm -hmm. are doing incredibly well. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Yep. Yeah. I mean, there are definitely businesses that, that, you know, are, are doing so well. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a big business like Lowe's or, you know, the, the, you know, a, a small landscaping company that just has one truck, yes. you know, or the, the blinds installers, all those various things. I mean, it's, it's, it's been amazing how people have, have, you know, accepted this and gone, Oh, okay, well now here's what we're going to do next. 
Exactly. Exactly. Well, tell people how they find you and how they connect with you, Dominic. You know, I think the easiest thing to do is uh, if you have any interest or questions or you just mm -hmm. don't know where to start, email me. And the okay. way to reach me is D Rinaldi, D-R-I-N-A-L-D-I mm -hmm. at sunacquisitions.com. Perfect. I love it. I love it. And I found you on LinkedIn. Um, so, you know, that's always a good place to connect. Um, but but this is great. So, you know, I, I look forward to, to chatting with you again, because I think this is, is you know, an on good ongoing conversation. But until then, do you have any final thoughts for everyone? Uh, I, I'd say, you know, business ownership is a tremendous way mm -hmm. to uh, achieve personal and financial freedom. And, uh, I've done it myself. Mm -hmm. And so if you think it's right for you, do your homework, mm -hmm. really do your homework, make sure that uh, you've got a plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you need help, we're here to help you. Perfect. I love it. Well, I'm Deb Creer. I've been having a fascinating discussion with Dominic Rinaldi of Sun Acquisitions. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.